Today I'm speaking with Professor Giorgio Primicieri. Professor Primicieri is visiting Sergii to present his interesting paper that describes the imbalances that precipitated the recent US financial crisis. Uh, you're here to present a paper on the saving and banking lot that causes the US financial crisis. Can you tell us more about uh, your findings and about the paper? Sure. So uh, this is a paper that tries to understand the role of foreign capital inflows in the US for the housing boom and the incredible increase in uh, household debt that happened before the financial crisis of 2007-2008. And there are two, uh, two mechanisms through which capital inflows affected the US economy in the paper. One is the saving glut and the other one is the banking glut. The saving glut are these net inflows from countries uh, such as China, in, in, in general Asian, East Asian uh, and oil producing countries. These were net capital inflows that resulted in large trade deficits. The other channel is the so-called banking glut um, and these are large uh, uh, gross flows that were matched so large gross inflows that were matched by large outflows of similar magnitude. So they didn't result in any trade deficit. And these were mainly coming from European countries. Um, basically, we established, based on the quantitative model that we used, that these capital inflows, both net and gross, accounted for about one third of the increase in house prices and household debt. Uh, in the period preceding the recession. So far people were blaming the uh, irresponsible financial system for the recent crisis. Does your new evidence somehow take some of the blame of these uh, institutions? <laughs> That's very hard to say. Um, so if we interpret uh, the results of this paper, literally this means that part of the build-up of debt and the housing, let's call it housing bubble, or the, the increase in house prices, partly of them were, uh, part of them were due to uh, capital inflows from abroad. Um, so whether the banking sector is responsible or not for at least part of these developments in the US economy, we don't answer this question. Uh, of course, many people think so, as you were uh, pointing out before, and I, and I would agree about the fact that uh, um, regulation, either explicitly or implicitly, became loser in these markets and allowed uh, the banking and the financial sector to channel more funds towards residential mortgages. But at the end of the day, I mean, one interpretation of the banking sector is uh, <coughs> a sort of veil between lenders and borrowers. So this increased desire to lend has to come eventually from, uh, from the lenders that are not, you know, that are not the banks, the, the banks are just a channel. Do you keep track of the data after the crisis? I mean, how is the trend of the financial inflows into the US after this recent crisis? So, after the, we, know, we all know what happened after the crisis. Uh, uh, starting in, um, in mid-2006, approximately, house prices collapsed in the US. And with the fall in house prices came also um, a process of deleveraging. De uh, by the U.S. household sector. So the U.S. household sector, as I was mentioning before, had accumulated an enormous amount of debt before the recession and when the financial crisis and the recession came, they either wanted to or they had to uh, reduce this amount of debt. And so if you plot a measure of debt over GDP um, in the data, you see that it went up substantially and now it's coming down. Now the deleveraging process is low, it's lower than the leveraging up process, so we don't really know whether the amount of debt by American families will go back to uh, the level of the, of the pre-expansion, say the 1990s, or it will stop somewhere, uh, somewhere in the middle. Uh, we know that there was a very severe recession in the US, um, and uh, my impression is that slowly, um, the U.S. economy is recovering 
um, and it's recovering faster than the than the European economies because uh, problems related to um, to fiscal policy and government debt are less severe in uh, in the U.S. Uh, it's too early to say that we're completely out of the recession and the financial crisis, but. Uh, you know, as one would expect, the economy seems to be, the U.S. economy seems to be going in that direction. Uh, people talk about another financial crisis after observing the recent increase in the housing prices. Is their worry justified? Do they have a reason to be concerned? So um, I haven't looked at house prices in in the last few months. Um, but if you look at the time series of house prices. Uh, um, one series I, I often look at is a series you can find on Robert Schiller website. He has this real price, uh, uh, real house price index uh, that he constructs for a very long time period that starts uh, in 1880 or something like that. And I find it quite striking. If you plot it over time, you see house prices fluctuating. They go up and down. Um, and, but the fluctuations in the century before 2000, year 2000 are peanuts relative to the increase in house prices that happened between 1999 and 2006. And uh, based on that graph, you would say that the increase in house prices uh, between 2000 and 2006 was like three, four, five standard deviations relative away from, from the mean. So something unheard of, unseen before. Now, after the spike in house prices in, 2000, in, in 2006, house prices collapsed very rapidly. And essentially, at least last time I, I, I look at, the, uh, at this index, house prices uh, went back to their level, approximately to their level in 1990 or in the 1990s, okay? So pretty much to their average level um, historically. Now, I haven't seen whether house prices have increased substantially in the last few months, uh, but I, I, I would say uh, it's not, it, wouldn't, it shouldn't be a reason of concern yet, given, you know, historical data. If they start behaving like they did in 2000, 2001, 2002, then I would. Are you fascinated by bubbles? Uh, can you actually explain them? Do they exist? Should they exist? But I'm fascinated by it, but um, I'm usually fascinated by things that I don't understand very well. <laughs> um, as you might imagine, it's very hard to say whether, especially in real time, whether a bubble exists, whether the, 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 the price of a house or the price of a asset uh, at a particular point in time is linked to fundamentals or is delinked to fundamental. A posteriori, I guess, if you look at the data that I mentioned before and you see house prices going up so much relative to historical values, uh, then it's hard to believe that there, was, that there wasn't anything about a bubble story going on. But of course, while this thing was happening, I'm sure that there were many um, academic economists or press commentators uh, or policy makers arguing that the increase in house prices was justifiable based on some fundamentals. So it's very hard to say. That's all the questions I have. Thank you, Professor, for this interesting interview. And on behalf of Sergei, thank you for your visit here.